Hino number one has now reached 405 degrees and we have a really smooth uh, filament output. It's getting pulled nicely and yeah, it looks quite nicely like filament. And this also means that the baseline of 400 degrees was already quite nice. In most cases of uh, material test you would have to decrease the entire baseline. But in this case 400 degrees was spot on already. And uh, of course the main goal is to have a, a stable flow which is very important if you want a tight tolerance. In the lock we can already see, so we determined our tolerance, maybe you can see it, the red and yellow line. We want to stay between that 50 micron industrial tolerance that's more or less the standard for filament production and it's trying to stay in between that and that is controlled by the, uh, the puller mechanism sorry so how this works is uh, the optical sensor measures the real-time thickness and based on that the puller mechanism pulls it uh, so it stays within the 50 micron tolerance or at least as tight as possible but for this you would need a flow as steady as possible so the puller mechanism doesn't have to adjust that much it does just does some minor uh, adjustments mm. so you want a flow as steady as possible and the puller mechanism to do as little work as possible now you may have noticed we're not spooling this filament even though the flow is quite nice as you said the first step for any any material test but for peak as well will be to correct and adjust the baseline in that case again 400 degrees uh, is a nice baseline from this we're going to move on to the second part of the adjustment and that's the fine tuning of each heater individually and in some cases we would need to modify the rpm as well in that case we have a nice flow uh, and we can see that the tolerance on the computer, the tolerance is very tight. We just have a few points outside the tolerance. In a nutshell, um, the plastic needs to melt not too soon, but soon enough. If it melts too soon, we have a liquid pushing a liquid inside the barrel, and that's not super consistent. No. If it melts too late, we have unmelted particles. Here, uh, it seems like the filament is very smooth and the flow is quite constant. We can still improve that by fine tuning. And to do this, we're going to adjust each heater individually and we're going to have a look at the first part of the machine yeah. and we're going to decrease the temperatures a bit to have an ascending profile so we're going to just play around with heater number three and heater number four until we have the perfect super tight flow uh, we might make mistakes and that's why we're not spooling the filament just just yet we are just letting the filament fall on the ground when we get a very tight tolerance for a, a while long enough and we're making sure for each adjustment we're waiting long enough 10 to 20 minutes per adjustment yeah. when we are sure that our flow is very stable then we start spooling and we know that the whole spool will be of good quality so for now let's just modify the first part of the machine to see if yeah. we can just tighten it the tolerance just a bit more yeah exactly and uh, the first part of the machine, so that's related to feeding, like Louis explained. And you can already see some things in the log uh, that have a nice correlation with this. For example, the extruder RPM. It should be quite stable if the RPM, so the speed of the, the screw, if it's fluctuating a lot, that means that it's having a hard time pushing the material through. Because if you have some unmelted particles, then it might clog sometimes the, the screw and it might take the the motor a bit more power to push those pellets through and you want this to be as stable as possible because if the screw uh, suddenly increases or decreases in speed that also influences the output of the material if the screw suddenly increases in speed you have more output and vice versa and also the extruder current that's something interesting to look at because uh, we don't have a pressure sensor inside this machine. In usual uh, industrial extruders, you would have a pressure sensor, so you know if good pressure is being built up, which is very important for extrusion. But in this case, we like to look at the extruder current. So that's how much power is needed to rotate the screw. And usually uh, this current is around 2000 milliamps. You can see it in the log and that should also be fairly stable if you see the motor current going up and down that means something is not quite stable in the feeding process or if it's very low 
that means not enough pressure is being built up or if it's very high that means uh, something is not going quite well and something is clogging in the front because there is pressure being built up but it's being stopped by something maybe unmelted particles or maybe it's clogged here maybe the nozzle is too cold so based on that you can uh, base your next iteration step yes it's an iteration based uh, process we can make mistakes but the idea is having a look as you said on the log understanding the graphs a bit for example the stability of the motor current and the rpm and keeping an eye on the actual output to see if it's still smooth, homogeneous, um, nice and shiny without any burnt particles or any unmelted bumps. Keeping an eye on, on both things, you will eventually achieve good results and find a good set of settings. It's important to mention that here we're making adjustments for this specific grade of peak, PrimeTech 10G. Again, it's a generic grade of peak. Uh, your peak might differ slightly from ours. Generally speaking, a nice baseline of 400 degrees Celsius works for all of the peaks yeah, we've done, yeah. we've experimented with so far. But keep in mind that these tiny adjustments can differ from one peak to another peak. And keeping an eye on the log and the results will ensure that you have a, a good quality. And again, yeah. don't don't be too uh, too impatient. We will be learning uh, learning some some different things in the yeah. process. And by doing small adjustments and waiting long enough for each adjustment and exploring the window of operation, we will learn a lot about the plastic, how it behaves, how to make it work nicely. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to take our time, make small adjustments, and we'll find the, the set of settings that gives the best and most stable flow. What we did was we decreased heater number four by 10 degrees. Now it has reached that temperature and we actually see some changes. Uh, for example, the motor current is, uh, is a bit more stable now and it increased also a little bit, which means that more pressure is being built up and so the flow is a bit more stable as well and that has an influence on the tolerance as well. So it might be a bit difficult to see from there, but we're actually achieving a bit more stable tolerance. It's almost 50 microns, some tiny peaks that are going out of it, but I think we're heading in the right direction with this one. That's right. So what we've seen also is that when we play around a bit by, by, by accident, of course, with the with the filament, we're slightly disturbing the, the reading from the from the sensor. Yeah. So it's also to keep in mind, uh, keep an eye on each and every aspect of the process to make sure you don't forget anything. In, for example, in this case, the, the fact that I'm moving around with the, the filament. Um, we can see as well something that's not being read by the sensor because the sensor is an optical sensor with a unidirectional um, uh, ray or direction of reading. What we cannot see is that the filament is actually a bit oval. It is slightly flattened by the puller wheels, which means when it reaches the puller wheel, the, the, the peak is a bit too hot and a bit too, uh, too soft. So we have to fix this, uh, this last issue now that the flow is more stable. And for this, we have different options. We have uh, the fan speed, obviously. It's a mm -hmm. fast adjustment. We also have the RPM and the temperatures. So what yeah. do you think we should do uh, at this point? Yeah, so we just increased heater number one to 405 degrees because at 400, so a bit lower temperature, we got a rough surface. So we don't want to go down on the temperatures because we don't want to get that rough surface again. Uh, so at least we can cross that off the list. Uh, there's the RPM. We can decrease the RPM because then you have slower output and you have more time to cool the filament before it reaches the puller wheels. Or we can uh, change the fan speed. We can increase it so you have more cooling. That might be the quickest and easiest solution. Uh, but the fan speed uh, depends on the room temperature actually. So for different uh, circumstances, you might need different fan speeds. And the RPM, um, it might be a bit tricky because if you decrease it, the heating uh, system will also be influenced by it because the material passes through the system more slowly, less pressure is being built up, less friction, so uh, more power needs to be generated by the heaters in general. So uh, it quite, quite disturbs the flow. And now we finally have a really steady flow I think the quickest and easiest solution would be in this case to increase the fan speed and of course it might not be the perfect solution but we'll just try it out and if it doesn't have the desired result we'll just uh, decrease the fan speed again and we'll try it with the RPM.
Yeah, so we're, yeah, we're still in the at the end of the experimental phase after all. And let's assume we have a very well controlled environment with a constant temperature in the room. So we can play with the with the fan cooling without being too worried about the, for example, the winter summer difference. Uh, if the temperature in the lab changes, in that case, you'll need to change the fan speed again. But here, let's assume we have a, t a controlled environment. We can play with the fan speed and find the right one. And let's assume we're a bit concerned about the production rate, for example, so we don't want to decrease the RPM too much in that case. Plus, as yeah. you said, we have a stable flow already. And with the adjustments we made and the nice ascending profile of temperatures we found, it seems like the peak is melting at the exact right point in the barrel. We don't want to disturb this uh, either. So yeah. let's just make these final adjustments and let's try and, if, and see if we have, can have a nice tight flow of peak with a round a nice cross section and a smooth surface. Actually, Louis, while you were talking, I changed the fan speed. I increased it by 20%, and I can already we can already see some difference. It's not doesn't seem to be flattened anymore, but uh, I do see a negative influence on the tolerance actually, because a higher fan speed uh, it solidifies the material a bit more uh, quickly but you need it to be somewhere in between liquid and solid because the pooler mechanism pulls it to desired thickness and if it's already solid too soon you cannot pull in it anymore so you need to be somewhere in between so i'm gonna slightly decrease the fan speed again by 10 percent you're right the idea is to solidify the plastic completely of course before it reaches the puller but not too soon and not too close from the nozzle uh, in order to allow for a nice stretching to the desired thickness. So in that case, indeed, we want a solidification around right above the sensor block. Yeah. Right. So with the uh, with 60 percent of fan speed, it seems that we have the solidification at the exact perfect point for a nice and, and round um, around cross section and also uh, a good pulling to the desired thickness. Yeah. And I think the tolerance is quite tight. Yeah. So we can start spooling. We can start spooling. In the previous video, uh, how to get started with the material test, we've explained more about the spooling process, so I'm not going to go in depth. I'm just going to get started. And in the meantime, Louis has some other things to say. Yes, uh, I would just like to, to mention a few things. First, um, at this point, we have a very good tolerance, plus minus 50 microns for a 175 filament. So that's the standard um, industry accepted or generalized tolerance for a filament but this is arbitrary the the need for good uh, for the tight tolerance and the need for good settings might vary depending on your printer for example some printers can work better with um, with a more or less tight tolerance in that case we have a tight tolerance but this is this is not always always mandatory it depends on how much time you're ready to invest in finding the good settings by the way the we we took about two hours to find the, the, the very, very good settings, close to perfect settings to extrude this grade of peak. This time might vary again. It depends on, on how much, um, how tight of a tolerance you want. And it depends on the grade of plastic and the quality of it. Here we, we took about two hours, but in some extreme cases, it might even take up to a few days of pure experimentation and exploring of the window of operation of a plastic to actually find good settings. In that case, the process was fast and the spooling has just started. Timo is just adjusting the, the tension on the spool because indeed we have to make sure we have a nice and tight spooling process not to ruin uh, all of the good results we've found so far. Okay, so the spooling process has started. I'm now gonna close the door to make an even uh, more stable environment because if someone walks into the room, you get some more airflow in the room and that might cool down the filament and then your filament might go slightly out of tolerance and you can see in the log there's like a small peak that's because i moved around the filament to attach the spool and that slightly disturbed the uh, reading of the filament that's right uh, with closing the door just keep in mind one thing uh, if you close the door you will tend to accumulate a bit more heat inside this area here and in certain cases uh, with very sensitive plastic uh, plastics, you might have to adjust the fan cooling just a bit more. Yeah. Uh, but indeed, the, the spooling process should make the, the pooling of the filament a bit more smooth and we won't have that movement of filament 
uh, with us playing around with the filament. So yeah. uh, we'll see in a few minutes how the spooling goes, uh, yeah. but probably will be nice and stable. Yeah, exactly. And then we'll take a look at the log. We see if it's stable and hopefully these are the right settings and we can make a full spool of this peak and maybe next day we'll reuse these settings so we don't have to go over the entire process again like Louis explained. Yes. We can just reuse these settings because these are the settings for Prontec 10G, at least in our environment. Yep. We now have spooled a certain amount of peak, not too much because we want to speed up the process a bit. We just wanted to show you how it works. You're, you're free, of course, to spool a, a full spool of peak, one kilo, two kilos, and stop whenever you want. In that case, we can stop the spooling and we can now use the log as the, the, second, the second function of it, and that's quality controlling the, the spools we made. So we keep yeah. an eye on the log. We see that the, the bit of spool we spooled was very well kept within the nice tolerance. So in terms of quality check, the log tells us it was a nice spool. We can now stop uh, the, the peak extrusion. But, and that's very important, uh, when you're working with peak, it is extremely, extremely important not to leave any peak inside the machine. So we're not gonna switch off the machine as it is. We're going to purge the peak out of the machine with the Devil Clean high temp, uh, with the current settings around 400 degrees. We're going to do the reverse process of what we did before. We're going to decrease temperatures to 300 degrees push the devil clean high temp out of the machine with the devil clean mid temp and then only then we can switch off the machine it's very important again i repeat not to leave any peak inside the machine nor any uh, devil clean high temp because both when turning solid become as hard as a rock so make sure you do the the exact same pro procedure we applied to heat up the machine make sure you apply the reverse one to cool down the machine peak Devil clean high temp and then cool down Devil clean mid temp. Exactly. So it's very important. And I just cut off the spool. It's a small amount of peak because we're on a tight schedule here. <laughs> but uh, you can see it's really neatly spooled because we put in the right dimensions of the spool and that way you have the spool, uh, the filament in neat rows. So that's quite important for the printing step because it's, if it's not neatly spooled, it can get entangled during the printing of the filament. And there's nothing worse than ruining good results and good settings with a bad spooling. Exactly. Yes. So quality check the spool and when you're happy with it, you know that the settings you found for your peak, you can use, it, use them next time skipping the research part of the settings. Yeah. That's where we are. So yeah, that, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope this information was useful in your situation and of course in the future we'll uh, handle more topics, more advanced polymers and additives for example and we'll also do some troubleshooting video because in this video everything went quite smoothly but in the future we'll also make some videos where we show some things that can go wrong because there are a lot of things you can do wrong with this machine and we'll show how to fix that of course and also um, if you want us to do and handle certain topics, please let us know in the description below because we'll definitely need your input in this situation. And like Louis said, watch the purging video because it's very important after processing peak that you completely clean the machine. Once again, thank you for watching. My name is Timo. My name is Louis. See you later.